Hi guys, this is the advisor and welcome back to my channel. Now, I would like you guys to take a look at this picture. Look at this picture of this, look at this face. All three photos are of the same individual. Now, a lot of you can picture seeing this person serving you in a Digicel store or a Lime store. Or you might even imagine her being like, um, you see her come off the bus every morning heading into a call center to work. And, you know, you, there is nothing uninteresting or unusual about her, except that she's a very pretty girl. But, my viewers and subscribers, you are looking at one of the most toxic, malevolent, and dangerous, and bloodthirsty human being you have ever seen. This is Tony Ann Two Fly Reed, and I'm going to tell you about her and some of the things she has done that makes her one, probably the most murderous female that has ever come out of this island of Jamaica. One of the first things we have got to understand about her is that her toxicity and her malevolency didn't start like in when she was a, 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 an adult. It started from, it seemed to have been in her from birth. Because when she started doing these things, the first man she killed, she was only 15 years old. Even at such a young age, she had already aligned herself to the sixth gang. There are at least 11 deaths which Two Fly, some of which Two Fly had actually done herself or who she had participated in and probably fired some of the shots into those victims. And I think there are the, the more I dig, the more I find. But I'm going to tell you about how many, at least some of these deaths that she caused. And surprisingly, the first death that Tony Ann did by herself was really the first, probably the first she ever did in her life. And at that time, she was 15 years old. 15, and this was in 2010. That is the reason why, you know, when I tell you guys say about getting rid of the alligator, eliminating the alligator from its inside the egg and don't make it grow, when you cut out the thuggery, it starts from birth. It normally born inside you. Okay. The man that she took out. That this was her initiation stage. Because where, even when she was in school at that age. She was seeing a thug named. Well I don't know his right name at the time. But he was called Hattis. And part of her initiation. Was to lure. Um, Carlton Davis. Them call him Zaza. Now, who is Zaza? Zaza was a thug. He was born in Jamaica, but he went to the United States when he, he was pretty young. He went over there, got in trouble, um, murdered people, went to jail, served time in jail, came out, was deported to Jamaica, and decided to take up, wanting to take over a part of the turf down in Montego Bay. And this like man said no. And so um, they couldn't lure him out of the area, you know. So what they use? They use Tony Ann. They have her, she had a school friend who was living, I think, next door to um, Carlton Davis or, or um, Zaza. And she visited there until she got to know him. And him kind of like her off. You know, these thugs like little young vegetable. And she make a date with him. To meet him outside of the area. And him like a fool, him take the bait. 
He told, she told him that, listen, you, we can't do it in this area because that people in here know me. Me have teacher live close by Ray Ray. So here what you do. I'm not coming over your yard. So let's find a place. And they set a date and they went to a guest house in Mandeville. And when they reached the gate, she just pulled up and just pulled out her thing and bust him in the back of him head. And then there was a car waiting for her outside and she just jumped in it and she left. She did it by herself. And for those of you who had been following this channel for a while, um, up just about two weeks ago, I put out a, this particular video. Just look at the thumb, thumbnail here. You see who this is? This person in the pink and grey. This is Two Fly. See her there handling two big rifles all by herself and because this is what because at one time she was the armory supervisor for the whole arsenal for the six gang now just looking at this individual you guys think you would really be walking on the road and see this person and think that this person is one of the most cold-blooded murderers that jamaica had ever seen you're not gonna think so but there is her looking all decked out like she's heading for her job while she's one of the biggest scammer and one of the biggest killers in j and, and perpetrator and organizer of murders and there is she in the back of her yard or wherever training on rifles which just goes to show that sometimes people can't just take people at face value and think that everything is a-okay on Saturday, August 13th, 2016, um, Tony Ann Reed and her thugs struck again. Right in broad daylight on Gloucester Avenue in Montego Bay at just around 1.30, she and her gang draw down on a Toyota Mark X, a black Toyota Mark X, and just shot the two occupants dead and drove away. Actually, the poo they were after was was a thug called Fry Eye, which was part of another gang and a part of the rival gang and they thought that Fry Eye was probably in the vehicle and it was he they were after people suspect and they just the car was parked there and they just drive up blaze it up and just left and as I said at that time she was just 15 years old boy over the years she kept up her thug life she never put it down and she just went on and on. But the, oh, the next incident in which she was found to have actually murdered people was in um, 2016. She and two more, more men jumped out of a car at Megitop Community in Salt Spring, St. James on the 3rd of February 2016. And they just a little bar and they just blazed it up with, with bullet, killing Sandrine Samuels, who was just an 18-year-old bar, bartender, and, and a 40-year-old Al, Al, Alfonso Foster, and a guy named, and named Andre Barrett. But it's, it's, it's really Alfonso Foster they come for, and they, they just blazed up the place. To, to make a lesson. Why they came for Alfonso is that he had a son who was a thug in a rival gang. And they, they couldn't find that son. So they just took out the father. And anybody else who was around him at the time. Surprisingly, the next person that she had a hand in, in um, taking out was a guy named a thug. A scum of the earth called Omar Lewis. Them call him King Evil. He was a very notorious gangster in the Katrina section of Man Montego Bay. He was responsible for a whole lot of murders in the, um, in the St. James area. But he was never actually convicted because nobody would come to court and, 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 and um, testify against him or give statement against him. So... After him do some killing, him fly out when police was looking for him, go over America, cause problem, them deport him. He stayed in Horizon Remand Center for a while in, in Kingston. 
Then he was sent back to Montego Bay. And as him come back within a short time, um, Two Fly and her gangsters went for him. Well, him deserve to get why I'm getting up. Because he was on the police most wanted list a whole lot. And, I mean, the police was glad to get rid of him. So, Tony and even in her evil state, was providing a public service by taking out some scums of the earth like herself. Word on the ground is that she was the one who went over him and pumped at least five or six into him after he fell right there on the street. Then again, on the 21st of December, 2021, right there in Man Montego Bay, two cousins, 28-year-old Odin Satu, otherwise Ka Ta called um, Tani, and 25-year-old entertainer called Damian Coleman, others some call him Essex. SK, both of Paradise in St. James, both were shot at a stoplight. A car just draw down upon the two men in the car. I think it was three people in the car. The car just draw down and it was Tony and who was driving. I hear that when the car stopped because the car stopped on the right of the other car and she was, was, was driving. I hear that she opened her door and also got out. And started firing in, in the vehicle from a handgun while the others were using rifles. So out of the four people in the car, three were shot. And two died, one ended up in hospital and recovered. Then on February 11, 2019, Nigel Marshall, also called Kingman of Bucktow Lane in Salt Spring, was killed at the corner of... King Street and Union Street in Montego Bay. He was just standing there the evening and the car just drive up. A man just come out and just blaze him up and just gone. Which, is, which of course is typical of how this gang works. Just drive down upon you, shoot you up, gone. Having said that, you know, Nigel Marshall was no good, good boy. Again, this is a person who, I mean... No decent person is going to shed a tear for him. Because the reason why Nigel Marshall, or Kingman as they call him, was killed is because he's believed to have been one of the men who went into a beauty parlor on the 28th of January, just a, a, a few, um, a week or so before, and killed another thug called Matthew Whittingham. And Matthew Whitt Whittingham was part of j -Man's um, gang not really part of but affiliated and he was on J-Man's good side and J-Man was um, Tony and Reed's baby father I'll say more about that in a, in a minute then on Saturday the 9th of October 2021 what are the most dramatic shooting scene ever to happen Something right out of Hollywood happened right there in Montego Bay. Broad daylight, about 2 p.m. in the af afternoon. Four thugs were in a car being driven by Tony Ann, who was the fifth person. They were trailing another car where they wanted to go um, murder a set of man in, in a Toyota Corolla. But the other men had guns and they were shooting at each other and firing at each other. But Tony Ann, for some reason, she got coward and crashed the vehicle. And these vehicles were traveling for almost a mile, shooting at each other. After the vehicle crashed, it's like the thugs inside the vehicle, inside the markets, they were sort of dazed for a minute. So the men just stopped their Toyota Corolla, come out, and just sprayed the vehicle with um, gunshots and just left. In, in, in that particular incident, three men died. The fourth was injured and only Tony and escaped injury. She was arrested and then guess what? She was released on bail. <laughs> the Jamaican crime um, justice system is a sham. One big joke. And you know, it's that wanton disregard for human life. 
several people. I think it was five other people who were shot, including a little, what, 11-year-old girl, and she was critical in hospital. I'm not even quite sure if she had recovered. But six months after, about six or seven months after, in, on Thursday, May 25th, 2022, Tony Ann Reed, also called Two Fly, she got what was coming to her. They were holding a party for one of the thugs. Evening, on that early, early evening, just round about 4.20 p.m., a Toyota Axio just drive up in front of the party where Tony Ann and some of her um, thugs were and just started spraying bullets from rifles. And then the men just jumped back in the vehicle and drove away. Tony Ann and several of her thugs died. Tony Ann actually died in hospital. Old murderers, Chadwell Fraser, known as Bamb Bambrian, Chamario Calvin, with them called Chippy, who was another bloodthirsty murderer of ball ground in Rose Heights, and of course, Tony Ann. What I love about Tony Ann is that she mostly took out thugs like herself. Because thugs hate other thugs. And they are just in a sense of self-destruction. And they destroy each other. So, Tony Ann Reed, also known as Two Fly, have taken at least nine lives that we know of. Is that she was directly responsible for pulling the trigger are joined in and jointly committed those murders. And these are just the ones that we know about. And, and these are just the ones that we actually know of her involvement in. But, you know, in the aftermath of all this, there is something that we have got to look at. Tony and Reed, as once come off the earth, we have got to understand that she has a child who is now about maybe eight year, years old or seven. And she had that child with another scum of the earth called J-Man. Now J-Man, like her, is a mass murderer. Now when two people like these get together and have a child, what do we expect that child to become? There is nothing... Boy, I, I don't know, but I think the government need to pay special attention, give a special eye on that child. Because, here, here's the thing, let's, let's look at it. Blood fall a vein, and blood is going to fall a vein in this case. To me, okay, um, it's a 99% chance that this child, because of his nature, because of the genetic makeup that has been passed on to him, is more than likely going to be a thug. Yeah, man, thuggery and that sort of thing can be inherited from parents. And we have to look at it kind of like sickle cell. If both, if one person in out of the peer union have sickle cell, the child don't must get it. They might just develop the trait. But if both parents have it, the picnic virtually cannot miss it. So, this is not me washing my mouth from people picnic. This is just me quoting facts about the science. So, all I can say is goodbye to fly. I hope nothing like you ever develops in this country. Although I know that it's just wishful thinking. Because there are several of them right now. Maybe, but we just don't know who they are and what they are doing or the extent of their criminality but there you go guys like share leave a comment below and i look forward to seeing you in my next video